we're going to be looking at the function of a simple AC alternator, which is an alternating current generator, and that makes use of electromagnetic induction. An AC alternator consists of a coil of wire which rotates within a magnetic field. And so, as there's a change in flux linkage in the coils, this results in induced EMF. Every half cycle, the current direction reverses, and hence we get an alternating current output. If you remember, flux linkage is equal to the product of the number of turns of coil and the magnetic flux. And so flux is equal to the magnetic flux density times the area of the coil. And we have this cos theta because we need to consider the magnetic field lines, which is perpendicular, passing perpendicularly through the plane of the coil. So theta is the angle between the magnetic field lines and the normal to the plane of the coil. So this diagram is representing a coil of wire of n turns, an area A, which is rotating inside a magnetic field of flux density B. And so the graph of flux linkage against time follows a cosine shape. When the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines, then theta equals zero. And so cos theta equals one, so we get maximum flux linkage through the coils. And so this will be at time equals zero, half a period later, and then a full period later. When the plane of the coil is parallel to the magnetic field lines, then theta, remember, which is the angle between the magnetic field lines and the normal to the plane of the coil, well then theta will equal 90 degrees. And cos of 90 degrees is zero, and so there's no flux linking coil. And so that will occur at quarter of a period and three quarters of a period. As the flux linkage through the coil is changing, then we're going to get an induced EMF. Faraday's law states that the induced EMF is equal to the rate of change of flux linkage. So we can represent a rate of change as a differentiation with respect to time t. The minus sign is for Lenz's law. And so we know magnetic flux is given by this. So if we substitute for magnetic flux into our equation for induced EMF, we will get this. N, B and A are constant, so they do not change with time. So we can remove them from the differentiation, bring them to the front. And also theta is equal to omega t, where omega is the angular frequency, that is 2 pi f or 2 pi divided by the time period, and t is time. And so if we substitute the theta into this equation, we'll get this. And so to get the induced EMF, we will need to differentiate cos omega t with respect to time. And if you differentiate a cos, you get a minus sign. So you have the minus here already, and minus sign, which will give you a positive sign. But we've also got to differentiate omega t with respect to time. So the omega will also come out. And so our induced EMF will be this. And so it will have a sign shape with respect to time. You can also see then that the induced EMF is directly proportional to the number of turns of coils. It's also directly proportional to the magnetic flux density. It's directly proportional to the area of the coils. 
and it's directly proportional to the angular frequency or the frequency of rotation of the coils inside the magnetic field. Just to note that you do not need to know this deprivation for the exam. So the flux linkage varies with time in a, following a cosine shape and the induced EMF varies with time showing you a sine shape. So we can see when flux linkage is maximum, that is when the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field, theta equals zero. And so as induced EMF is equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage, it can be found from the gradient of a flux linkage time graph. When flux linkage is maximum, the gradient is zero. So the rate of change of flux linkage is zero. So the induced EMF is zero. When flux linkage is zero, so that is when the plane of the coil is parallel to the magnetic field lines, so theta equals 90 degrees. We can see then from the gradient, you get maximum gradient, so you get a maximum rate of change of flux linkage, and so the induced EMF will be maximum. At a quarter of a cycle, you can see that the gradient is maximum and negative, but because of the minus sign here, that will give you a maximum positive induced EMF. At three quarters of a period, the gradient is maximum and positive. But because of the minus sign, the induced EMF will be maximum and negative. And remember, the minus sign is because of Lenz's law. If we were now to double the frequency of rotation of the coil, what would happen to the induced EMF? Well, by doubling the frequency, we would half the period of rotation. And so you'd have the same amount of flux linkage, but in half the time. So that means the rate of change of flux linkage would double and so the induced EMF would double. And so we would represent the graph like this. So the maximum induced EMF has doubled and the period has halved. And if you remember, we showed that the induced EMF was directly proportional to the frequency of the rotation. So doubling the frequency would double the maximum induced EMF.